Okay, um, so my video is on comparing and contrasting sources of energy for skeletal muscles, and there are like three main energy sources, and they are phosphocreatine, glucose and glycogen, and then fatty acids, and then within glucose and glycogen, there's um, aerobic and anaerobic, pro anaerobic processes. Um, the order is completely random. My brain's cooked. So, yeah, don't really. It's, the order doesn't really matter. So, the first one is phosphocreatine. At rest, you're going to have a bunch of ATP. You don't really need it. So, what's going to happen is through creatine kinase, and we know that kinase is an enzyme that catalyzes the phosphorylation of specific substances, right? Creatine will be phosphorylated and it'll turn into ADP plus phosphocreatine. And inside that um, phosphate bond with creatine is a lot of energy. And so what happens is during contraction or when you need energy, that phosphocreatine will then um, dephosphorylate and ATP is thereby regenerated. And so in short, phosphocreatine is backup energy. Our um, second source of energy is glucose and glycogen, and there's two specific processes. The first one is aerobic, um, which is just cell respiration. So in the presence of oxygen, um, it turns glucose into 38 ATP, and this happens in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. It's a very slow process. So, um, yeah, and then... The next one is anaerobic, and so this is anaerobic glycolysis, and this occurs in the cytoplasm. Excuse my drawing. This is why we're in physiology class, not in art class. And so when o the presence of O2 is low, glucose is turned into 2 ATP plus lactic acid and fatigue. It's a very fast process, and but what happens is you build up fatigue a lot and lactic acid, so you get pretty tired once you start using this process a lot. Now... Um, we move on to the third energy source, fatty acid. It's a very slow process. And I kind of skipped a few steps. Not really, we don't really need to know. But in short, what happens is the fatty acid breaks down to acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA, uh, and then the acetyl-CoA turns into acetyl-CoA subunits. And then through Krebs cycle, right, you get ATP and then resources for the electron transport chain. And then that electron transport chain leads to a lot more ATP. And it comes about to 129 ATP. So now we know kind of all, all of them. Um, I created a little like chart table thing. Um, so there's the phosphocreatine right here. There's the aerobic right here, the anaerobic, and then the fatty acids. So... I believe that the phosphocreatine is kind of used in all situations as it is a backup energy. Um, aerobic is used for the um, the slow and the FOG, and then the anaerobic is for the um, FG and FOG, and then the fatty acids is for the um, slow and FOG. So... Um, the PCR, it's it's a fast process, right? It's backup energy. You need it in a snap. That's what happens. Uh, the aerobic glycolysis, it's a slow process, right? Anaerobic, it's fast. Right? You need it. it. You need it in a snap. And then fatty acid, also a slow process. And with specifically the anaerobic, you get fatigue and also lactic acid. And then... Um, the last row is kind of like their energy sources, right? Uh, P the phosphocreatine is backup energy. The aerobic um, cell respiration is 38 ATP. Anaerobic glycolysis is 2 ATP. And fatty acid breakdown is 129 AP ATP. So hopefully um, you know the difference by now, which muscle fibers use them, and kind of the outcomes of each. Hope this helped.